Hey y'all, it's Lindsay from Redhead Baby Mama. I'm here today to create a craft in honor of the new Amazon original series, Nico and the Sword of Light. Um, this series is about a little boy who awakens from a magical cocoon, greeted by a princess who he thinks is a ghost, and a small little animal on a different planet in order to fight the darkness. Uh, not to spoil too much for you, but many warriors have come before him, and the darkness will truly test him to see if he is ready. The Sword of Light he has is an amazing glowing object and I've never seen animation glow like this before sort of like the Thomas Kincaid paintings um, and I thought it was so neat how the animators were able to bring such an amount of light into the animation that I wanted to honor it by making the sword of light so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tutorial how to make an inexpensive sword of light for your kids to play with and yes it will glow you can find all the items that I'm working with today in links below via Amazon, or you can hop over to your nearest craft store. I've got fun foam, scissors, a straight edge, cardboard from a leftover box, Gorilla Glue, um, duck glitter tape, popsicle sticks, a black light, and this amazing blue light UV paint that I got off of Amazon, MX24. Um, that glows blue. There's specific colors that you guys can get and when you hold up a light to it It will glow blue UV light and it's actually reactive um, Once you turn the lights back on so it's got some staying power. I've also got Duck glitter tape and you can see it's a little bit glittery I'm gonna use this to wrap the hilt so we get a little bit of light but a whole lot of darkness that's present in the show to use the magic of video and television I've actually pre-cut the template for the Sword of Light. I cut this out of a cardboard box I was using earlier to store some diapers. Great use to reuse and recycle. Um, and I freehanded it. So I studied the illustration and drew it out, cut it out with some craft scissors. Um, so it's ready to go. The first thing I wanna do to our Sword of Light is use a Gorilla Glue pen. Um, this is the white Gorilla Glue that dries clear and have some big, really thick popsicle sticks. The popsicle stick is going to give the Sword of Light a little bit of stability. Uh, regular cardboard, as you can see by me holding up what I'm working with, um, can break and be really flimsy and bend and that sort of stuff. I want to give this Sword of Light some staying power. So I'm putting the popsicle stick all the way deep within the hilt. Let that dry completely and move on to the next step. After this Gorilla Glue has dried, the next thing I wanna do is lay my Sword of Light up here on some gray three millimeter fun foam. By tracing around my sword, I've got a perfect template to cut out and to help wrap this sword in gray fun foam. Um, I want two of these pieces, so uh, cut those out and that'll be your next step. Okay, after your Gorilla Glue is pretty dry, you should be able to sandwich your sword in between these pieces, right, like this. And we will end up with a sword. Looks a lot like that. After you've got your two pieces of gray fun foam cut out, just like your sword of light, you can take a look at another blue sparkly piece. This time, when you're tracing onto your fun foam, just be concerned with the blade portion. And I'm actually gonna trace it on this side, so it's a little bit more hidden. Um, just trace your blade portion. Okay, now that I have my blade portion, I'm actually gonna cut this down from the original size of the blade. So these are my guidelines. And I'm going to grade the blade, try saying that twice times, um, into the hilt of the fun foam. So I'm gonna cut this out only on my dotted lines. So 
So when you've got your finished blade in here, it's gonna look a lot like that. So trim as you need to. To have that shape. And we want the blue to kind of disappear into this hilt. That's why it's a little bit longer right there. So now that I've got all my fun foam pieces cut out, I'm actually gonna trim this cardboard down a little bit and that's gonna help my blade be sealed up a little bit better inside the fun foam. To be completely honest with you, I forgot to compensate for the thickness of the cardboard. Okay, so I've cut down the sword a little bit and now you can see that I have this nice clear area for any adhesive to stick, which is great. Next thing I wanna do, Gorilla Glue this bad boy up. After you add the Gorilla Glue to one side, you may need to use some shop clamps because Gorilla Glue can expand. This will help everything stick really nicely. Okay, I have just removed the clamps from our project. It did leave a little bit of a mark, but that will re-expand. Now, as you can see, the Gorilla Glue here um, does sometimes expand when it is, when I put a little bit too much on there, so I'm just gonna peel that off really quick. Warmed up the glue gun again, because now I'm gonna lay this right on top glue it all together. Okay, this is completely glued together. Got a little bit of gapping. You can easily fix that by sticking that glue gun in there really fast and meshing it all the way down. Um, thanks to the cardboard and the popsicle sticks, this is really very sturdy, compared, um, you know, being that it is made of fun foam and cardboard. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my glittery duct tape I'm gonna decorate all aspects of my sword. Okay, so there you have a lovely little sword hilt. You guys can see the definition against the white table. Um, all wrapped in glitter. I've got my glowing blue in the center of my blade, which is gonna make me feel like in the daytime, um, I'm glowing a little bit more. And the next step is to get the UV paint out. This is gonna be great. Next step is to apply my MX24 Blue UV Craft Paint. Super easy to apply. I'm gonna go in batches. First thing I'm gonna do is to paint it onto my blue fun foam. It will dry clear, um, but I do wanna work quickly because I can use sort of this white glaze to see where I'm applying it.
Here comes the hard part, which is to wait for it to dry. Go ahead and clean up um, any spills from your UV paint with soap and water. Once it's uh, dry, it's really hard to remove and let this air dry um, and then we'll come back to it. Okay, you guys, I woke up so impatient today to see what the sword is gonna look like. I've got my black light bulb here ready to make this thing glow in the dark. I am so excited. So let's go see what we've got. Through the magic of the television, I gave it a second coat of blue UV paint. So it's been charging up in the daytime. Um, you can kind of see that I gave it some extra product here. I think, um, that it gives it a little bit of texture visually. But when you see what happens when this thing lights up, it will be amazing. Uh, right over, you guys can kind of see what's happening when I turn on just the black light in this room. All of this UV paint is being picked up and glowing blue. Um, as you remember, it is invisible when the light is on. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is charge this up and show you what happens in the dark. Okay guys, believe it or not, I am in the pitch black dark in the closet and this sword is glowing almost as much as a flashlight. This is the back side where you saw those texture marks and that is the front side. Um, you could easily play in the dark for a while. This has some serious staying power. Um, even in the dark on film, you know how things just don't like to light up on film, but it is, I mean, absolutely amazing. Can you believe this thing? It lit up so much. I was holding it against the wall. I could see the wall paint. Um, so that UV paint was amazing. What a good purchase. See the link below um, to get that for yourself on Amazon. Um, so make yourself a Nico sort of light. Wrap up that hilt and that glitter duct tape and fight the darkness in the dark. Can't wait to see what Red's gonna think of this. Make sure you tune in on July 21st for the series premiere of Nico and the Sword of Light streaming all episodes. See you guys later.